What's up everyone? It's me, Zombie, and today we are making some female chest armor for my Crusader cosplay from Diablo 3. Making female chest armor can be really intimidating, but I promise you it's not as hard as it seems. We're gonna make it really easy for you so you can go out there and make something really cool of your own. I'll be listing all the tools and materials that I'm using right down below. So if you want to learn how to make some cool female chest armor for your Crusader cosplay, Cosplay, or heck you could apply this to any cosplay that you're making that needs some extra protection in the lady areas then keep on watching first I'm going to make a chest slash breast armor pattern by wrapping myself in cling wrap this step is much easier if you have a friend to help you but you can totally do it on your own just like I'm doing I'm making sure that my shoulders and chest are covered with the cling wrap Wrapping the shoulders and the chest helps the cling wrap stay in place. Also, make sure not to wrap it too tightly around yourself so you can stay comfortable during this process. If you don't have cling wrap, you can use aluminum foil too. I've found that using cling wrap is much easier to use for covering a large area like this. As you can see, Past Grace is doing both for some reason. I think Past Grace was distracted by watching YouTube videos and did it both ways at the same time. Why? I'm using strips of duct tape and covering one side of my chest. Duct tape is gonna help hold my pattern's shape. I'm only covering one side because I know I can mirror this pattern, so both sides of my armor are symmetrical. I'm sketching a line where the approximate middle of my chest is as a reference. I'm also sketching out a line where my collarbone is. I'm using scissors and carefully cutting myself out of my cling wrap vest. Now that I have the pattern down in front of me, I can finish sketching out my desired booby cup shape with a marker. I decided to split my cup pattern into three different pieces. I'm doing this so my pattern would lay flat and be easier to transfer onto my foam. I made sure to add registration lines with a marker. I went back over my registration lines with a metallic marker and then used scissors to cut teeny tiny little triangle notches into my patterns. Doing this extra step will help me line up my foam pieces later when I glue them all together. Using a metallic marker again, I'm tracing each piece twice onto some 6mm foam. Since I cut those registrations into my patterns, they show up when I trace them. And if you have a bad memory like me, you can write on your patterns which parts go where. Now I'm using a sharp utility knife to cut out all the pieces. I'm using some barge and a squeeze bottle to apply a thin line of glue on my edges. Then I can use a scrap piece of foam to smooth out the glue to make it as even as possible. This step also helps remove excess glue. After the first layer of glue is applied to all my edges and starts to dry, I apply another layer. I find that adding two layers of glue makes my edges stick much better. Once the glue gets tacky on my edges, I carefully stick my pieces together making sure to take the time to line up all my registration marks. And now that my armor cups are all stuck together, I'm using a heat gun to warm up the foam. I'm using an acrylic dome to help form all my pieces. I found it was helpful to apply heat to both the acrylic dome and to the foam piece while applying pressure to achieve the shape I was looking for. After I was satisfied with my shapes, I used a rotary tool to round out the outside of the edges. The rotary tool also helped tidy up my seams. Now that I have my cup shapes, it's time to make the pattern for the rest of the chest armor. Since this armor design is so layered and bulky, I decided the easiest way to make a pattern for it was to fold a long piece of pattern paper in half and sketch my design onto it. Looking at my reference pictures, I shaded in the pieces that were recessed and outlined the pieces that would be added and layered. I cut out my pattern, unfolded it, and held it up to my body to make sure it was the right size. I cut out the recessed pieces of the pattern with an X-Acto blade and then transferred the entire pattern onto foam. I cut out the base piece with an X-Acto blade and cut out all the recessed pieces including the cut pieces. I cut out all the different layered pieces I drew on my pattern and traced them onto the 6mm foam as well. For cutting these smaller curvy pieces, I like using a smaller blade. I find it gives me a lot more control than using a larger utility knife. Now I want to round out all the edges with my rotary tool. This took a while to do, but this step really helps the armor look neater and more organic. Once all my pieces were rounded, I'm adding my booby cups. 
I'm using two coats of barge on each edge, letting it get tacky, and then carefully sticking them together. Some details on the chest have these cool creases in them. To make these, I used a straight edge and a metallic marker to mark a line down the middle where I wanted my creases to be. Then I used my X-Acto blade to cut out all the trenches. I carefully took the excess foam out of the edges. One by one, I applied super glue in each crease and then held it in place while it dried. And ta-da! My creases were complete! Then I started layering all my separate foam pieces onto the base of my chest piece. I looked at my reference pictures to remember what pieces went where and how each piece was layered. I found that using super glue was the easiest way for me to apply all these pieces. I added on some little fin details and one extra little piece that went in between the two cups here. I took some scrap foam and glued it to the inside of the chest where my indented details were. I used some paper to draw out fin details that go on either side of the armor. I traced my pattern twice onto 6mm foam, rounded the edges, and then glued them in place. Now it's time for the riskiest, yet most satisfying part of the build. Looking at my reference pictures, it looks like most of the chest is all one curvy piece. To fake this, I'm going to cover the entire chest piece with 2mm foam. I like using 2mm foam instead of Warbla for something like this because it's so much cheaper and more flexible. If you're careful with 2mm foam, you can cover your armor pieces with it just like you would with a sheet of thermoplastic. The downside of this method is that 2mm foam is delicate, so you really have to take your time and be careful when using it this way. I'm covering my chest piece and my 2mm foam with a layer of barge. When the glue gets tacky, I'm gently pressing the 2mm foam over my chest armor, making sure to pay extra attention to the creases and details. I'm using my fingers and the round end of a marker to press all the 2mm foam into the chest armor's details. I'm using barge for the larger areas and using super glue for some of the smaller details and edges. Taking my time allows me to avoid getting any creases or folds in my 2mm foam. Getting this right takes practice. I would suggest practicing with a smaller piece and getting a hang of this method before moving on to a larger piece like this. And if this doesn't turn out exactly how you'd like it to, fixing it isn't impossible. You can attempt to patch fix the area with another piece of foam, or you can remove the 2mm foam completely, sand your base piece, and try again. This takes work, but it's so satisfying when it works out. I use contact cement and super glue to curl the edges around the back and glue them in place. Super glue accelerant is awesome for speeding up the glue's drying process. And after everything was glued in place, I used a sharp blade to smooth down the edges even more. I used a heat gun to heat up the foam and shape the chest armor so it would fit my body. I added some etched in details and battle damage using my X-Acto blade and rotary tool. I used my heat gun again to help open up the details. I heat sealed the foam using my heat gun. This helps close up all the foam's pores and prepares it for being primed. To prime this piece, I sprayed on a couple coats of Plasti Dip. And ta-da! Here is my constructed chest piece. The front of this armor also has a large neck piece that pretty much comes up to the chin, but I'm going to be planning on making that a detachable part that I'll be making with the back armor. This is one of my favorite armor sets in Diablo, but I would love to know what your favorite armor set is. Let me know some of your faves in the comments. The first featured maker of this week is Mark Garcia from Puerto Rico. Him and his wife have really been doing some amazing things for their community. As you guys know, they had a really bad hurricane that hit a few months ago, and they are actually still without power, yet they're still creating costumes. They're going to all these community events just to help cheer up all the kids and and their parents who've been really affected by this horrible natural disaster. Mark and his wife dress up as superheroes and really bring a lot of smiles to the kids' faces in their community, which is really awesome. Mark was also kind enough to include the name of this charity that has really been helping his community out in Puerto Rico out during this really hard time. So if you guys want to check it out and donate, that would be super
super cool. Ninja Panda Cosplay showed me this awesome larger in life costume that they made. They look so cool. You can really tell a ton of work went into this. Check out Sharinka's awesome Freya cosplay from Smite. It's so cool and the photo and the editing is amazing. Also check out the little porg that Menifex made. Oh my gosh, it's so cute. It looks like a little baby porg. I love him. Lastly, Crater BK made this really cool steampunk costume. Check out this arm. He said he made it less than 24 hours, which is crazy. He looks fantastic in it and the photos turned out amazing as well. Amazing work everyone and thanks again for showing me what you made. I wonder what piece I'll work on next time. I want to know what you guys would like to see next, write down below. I always love seeing your suggestions and I'll see you again next time. Bye everybody.